presentation, uh, what I'd like to say is the agenda that I'm going to have today is basically talking about a little bit about who we are and what we do in OPQ. And then I'll go a little bit uh, into the details of OPQ pre-NDA process, followed by some metrics that, we, uh, that I'll be showing you as we come very close to the end of the first year since launch. And then uh, I'll share some lessons that we have learned along the way while we, we, are, we, while we were reviewing the uh, pre-NDA meeting packages uh, in OPQ. So before, again, before going to uh, the uh, quick introduction on OPQ, I'd like to share that uh, uh, we work very in very close collaboration with OGD on all the pre-NDA activities, including the product development meetings and pre-submission meetings. So uh, the Office of Pharmaceutical Quality actually stood up uh, in Jan 2015 with a shared goal of pharmaceutical quality, as the name suggests. So what we believe is that the pharmaceutical quality is what gives the patients and consumers their confidence in their next dose. And with that, the mission, vision, and the motto of, uh, of the pharmaceutical quality is in, in, is in line with the pharmaceutical quality uh, term. So I have the slide in here not to show the R, R chart, but what I'd like to say is that all the pre-NDA efforts are, uh, the, all the offices within OPQ uh, are involved either directly or indirectly in the uh, pre-NDA efforts. So the first team, so this is just a quick introduction on the OPQ pre-NDA team. The first team that encounters your a meeting package is the triage team, which is within the immediate office uh, within, uh, within the OPQ. So what the triage team does is basically uh, you know, decide if the OPQ should be involved and to what extent should it be involved. And it determines all the IQR, uh, integrated quality review team disciplines that are required for review of your meeting. So then is the regulatory business process manager. Uh, who is basically the project manager within the OPQ and uh, who facilitates the pre-NDA process. Uh, then comes the core integrated quality review team, which consists of several disciplines, and who actually reviews the meeting package. And the meeting chair, as Chris mentioned, uh, is from either of these offices, either uh, Office of Life, Life Cycle Drug Products or ONDP or sometimes OPF who actually coordinates all the technical matters and is also the signatory for, uh, the, for some of the documents. And uh, not the least, we have tech, all the technical advisors, including Office of Testing and Research within OPQ, uh, Office of Policy, and uh, Office of Biotechnology Products. And also, we have a pre-NDA working group that uh, looks, takes care of all the pre-NDA activities within uh, the OPQ. So now getting into the pre-NDA uh, pre process from an OPQ perspective. So before going into the actual uh, process, I'd like to mention what Chris already uh, mentioned in her previous presentation, that, uh, that all applicants must have a pre-NDA number prior, uh, prior to the meeting package uh, submission. So this is how a pre-NDA number looks like. So you have the first number that's basically your ANDA number. Uh, followed by the uh, uh, meeting package, the type of meeting package that you're submitting. It could be either a PDEV or a PSUB, which is a product development meeting or a pre-submission meeting. And then you have a meeting number. So the meeting number is very significant, unique to your th that particular meeting. So if you have a meeting that has been denied, and then if you come back with a you know, new meeting, you would still have the same ANDA number, but a different meeting number. So. Uh, a very important thing, again, is all of these pre-NDA uh, projects are, will be tied back, again, to your ANDA program when your ANDA is being submitted, when your ANDA is submitted. And this is for, your, for continuity and uh, transfer of knowledge. So now coming to the OPQ pre-NDA process itself. So when the pre-NDA is received in the portal and when it is filed, uh, it is actually uh, triaged by both OPQ and OGD in parallel. So there are a lot of discussions between OPQ and OGD at this stage before a, a single grant denial letter is sent by OGD. So this is, this is your 30-day phase right now, but then after a couple more years, it's going to be a 14-day time period. So for meetings where we have CMC questions and where OPQ has accepted the meetings, uh, the discipline reviews are triggered. And during the discipline review process, the discipline reviewers have a chance to uh, initiate a consult, 
especially like when there are devices, it's a CDRH consult, and sometimes botanical consults or OBP consult, which is biotechnology products consult. And also at the same time, the discipline reviewers are actively engaged uh, with the OGD review team, uh, especially questions where you need uh, uh, integrated responses, uh, questions like Q3 similarity, drug sameness, uh, drug sameness questions. So, uh, you know, during this discipline review process, there are uh, some o OPQ internal meetings and at least a couple of meetings with OGD before a preliminary written response is drafted and sent to the firm and the meeting is conducted. And this, uh, as already Chris, men Chris mentioned, that it's a 120 days period. And then uh, your meeting minutes are reviewed and drafted and finalized. And that's the closing phase, which is about 30 days. So as I mentioned, the first phase of this BNDA process is the uh, triage phase. This is where the triage team, which is within the OPQ science staff and from where I am, we review the product details and uh, look at the submitted questions in the meeting package to determine if, the OP, if OPQ should actually uh, be involved. Uh, and if, if it needs to be involved, to what extent it needs to be involved. And then this, this uh, decision is presented to the OPQ3 and the working group for concurrence. So these are the criteria that we look at uh, to make the decision of, of OPQ getting involved. So if we look at if the product is complex, we look if the meeting package is complete, and if there are any complex equivalent questions that we need to work on with OGD. And then we also look at if the CMC questions actually enhance the review efficiency. Sometimes there might be questions that are really not in the scope of the NDA program. And then we, uh, we look at if the if there is any product specific guidance or any CMC guidance in specific, if, uh, if any of those can answer the questions that are in the uh, meeting package. So you've seen this table from several speakers before, so I'm not going to go into this table, but what I'd like to mention is all those complex categories. Um, you know, you'll, you'll see more of these technical uh, presentations of these categories in today and uh, some, in, some tomorrow. So how does OPQ triage affect my pre-NDA process? So to answer that, there are three different scenarios. So your meeting package might actually not have any CMC questions. That's the best part we would you know, <laughs> expect. But uh, if uh, that, in that case, OPQ would decline, but uh, an active participation. But we would still be representing, uh, OPQ would still have a representative in the meeting. So, uh, the second scenario is where you have only Q3 sameness questions. Uh, this happens a lot with topicals. Um, and uh, in, in such case, OPQs accept decline decision in the meeting depends on OGD's decision. So basically, if OGD accepts, we accept, and if OGD declines, OPQ doesn't uh, de declines as well. But if there are other CMC questions, then, then the triage is based on the Gadufu 2 criteria and the SOPs. So for meetings where there are CMC questions and their OPQ has accepted the meeting, the triage team basically identifies the OPQ disciplines, uh, reviews that are needed for, me, for uh, reviewing of the meeting, uh, meeting questions. Uh, and uh, it, again, it depends on the questions that are being submitted. So and uh, the team actually determines if uh, OTR needs to be involved, the Office of Testing and Research and the Office of Policy. And uh, it basically assigns the accepted meetings to those specific OPQ disciplines that are uh, uh, identified based on the question. And then we monitor the pre nda program for metrics, process improvements, trends, and any workloads. Uh, so, and also we coordinate with OGD throughout this phase of uh, the meeting. meeting. So, uh, the IQR team is the core review team that actually reviews the meeting package. Uh, th this team is similar to the IQA team, which is like integrated quality assessment team that, uh, that reviews your ANDA. So the team uh, basically consists of the similar disciplines that uh, we have for uh, ANDAs as well. So we have off uh, different offices involved, ONTD, OLDP, OPF, and Office of Testing and Research, and several disciplines within these offices. So showing you a little bit of metrics, you must have seen the slide again previously uh, with Chris, where we had 65 total pre-NDAs as of July 31st, and 40 of them were actually granted by FDA. 
uh, out of those 40, 27 of them were uh, granted by OPQ, which means 27 of them really had uh, OPQ questions that had uh, that enhanced the review efficiency. So out of the 40% of uh, the applications denied by the agency, as you see, uh, incomplete meeting package is the major reason for the denials. And uh, you know the product not being complex is another next major reason. Also, there were times when uh, the applicant didn't choose the right pathway, which is whether it's PSUB or PDEV, the meeting type. Uh, and also, sometimes uh, the uh, firms were uh, routed to control correspondence routes for some of the questions as they were out of the scope of the NDA program. So, on the left, the graph indicates, uh, like Chris again mentioned, that there were a lot of topicals that were uh, submitted, and the remaining uh, routes of delivery are kind of more or less the same, except you know, as, but the oral, oral products here, though they seem like they're a lot, but most of the oral products that were submitted were actually not complex. So the so figure on the right basically shows that there were a lot of product development meetings uh, than pre submission meetings. So now coming to uh, the lessons learned, but before that, I'd like to uh, mention that. The discipline reviews are actually performed based on meeting uh, package questions. So you will not have uh, representatives from all the disciplines in the meetings. So you would have only the people that are really uh, responsible to review those questions that were submitted in the meetings. Uh, responses are integrated from different disciplines within OPQ, not only within OPQ, but also there are responses that get integrated uh, between OGD and OPQ. So you would get a single response for the questions where there is a, where there's a need for integrated response. And responses are based upon agencies' current thinking and knowledge, like we always say. Uh, there's a disclaimer there. So, and this may change with any available data or research. And uh, review issues are truly out of scope of the pre NDA uh, meeting. So here I could pull out some of the example pre NDA questions that we thought were reasonable and actually will, in, will probably enhance the review efficiency when they, when they actually NDA submitted. So here in the first question, the form actually gave us a list of uh, critical material attributes and critical process parameters that they wanted to monitor. And then they had a question if, uh, if the agency uh, can think about any other critical material attribute, material attribute or process parameter that uh, they need to address. So that we thought was a reasonable question given the complex nature of a lot of these products that uh, are being uh, submitted. So another question where the firm actually presented data and uh, you know, they, they wanted to know if uh, the proposed physical chemical tests and uh, comparative physical chemical characterization, uh, it was acceptable. So this question, again, is very reasonable. And, uh, and uh, this is another question where we actually truly integrate with OGD on giving a, a you know, single response. So uh, another very interesting question that we had uh, was on a nasal spray, where uh, the overall particle size distribution of the API particles was tested using the morphologically derived Raman spectroscopy and SEM EDS. So the firm wanted to know if their approach to this methodology was uh, you know, agreeable with the agency. Uh, this was a very uh, good question for us as uh, Office of Testing and Research has been uh, doing a lot of research on the morphologically derived Raman spectroscopy. And we were in a unique position to give an answer to this question. And this is, a, uh, this is another question where OGD, OPQ, and the research group were truly uh, integrated, I mean, truly uh, came together to provide a good response. So now coming to some of the pre-NDA questions where, uh, which we did not think were kind of the, uh, you know, in the scope of pre-NDA meeting packages and our review issues. Uh, this question is basically where the firm believed that the drug substance used in the manufacture of the batches uh, either did not contain amorphous material or could be present in an insignificantly low level that it does not affect product performance. And the firm wanted to know if they can just do only XRD tests for the drug uh, substance at the release uh, and not do it at the drug product, not do, not monitor in the drug product specification. Uh, so this is kind of 
uh, we don't think that you know this could be uh, you know answered just with a snapshot of the uh, data that is given. So we think this is more like where you have to review the entire application to uh, provide a response. So this is more a review question than a pre and a type of question. So another question where uh, the firm actually proposed some of the uh, you know, uh, proposed the manufacturing process and controls, and also in process controls, and asked if FDA would agree. Again, this is where you need to look at the entire application to provide a response if the manufacturing process was uh, acceptable and if the controls were sufficient. Uh, the last question is a, is a typical question where we always say it's a review uh, review issue, which is on the potential impurities. So the firm actually was asking if the impurities that were being controlled uh, are okay if they control it only in the drug substance and if at the limits uh, recommended in the pharmacopoeia and the IPH grouping. Again, this we refer this back to um, as a review question and not a pre a question. So coming to the lessons learned, we really do not like run-on questions like Chris already mentioned. So it would be good if you can separate out the questions as much as possible. I, I understand that there are some times where you have a you know, main question and some questions, but as much as possible, if you can put the questions uh, separately, that would be easier for the uh, triage team to actually triage the questions and, uh, and also for the reviewers to answer the questions uh, in the best possible way. And again, grouping the questions based on discipline helps both triage and also to, to make sure that you get uh, the response from the right discipline. And I cannot stress this enough because Chris also mentioned and we had that metric slide where 40% uh, of the applications have been denied and major reason for the denial being an incomplete package. So it would be good if every question that is being asked has uh, supporting, adequate supporting information so that you prevent uh, you know, the denials and also you give the best, uh, I mean you give a lot of time for the FDA reviewers to get the best possible response and uh, also avoid any information requests during the meeting so that you can save some time so that the review team gets enough time to get the best response possible. Thank you for your attention and uh, time. And so